Hello and welcome to the video version of the Using Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management and OpenShift GitOps to manage OpenShift virtualization block. My name is Felix Matoschek. Whether you want to separate your testing and production environments, improve the availability of your applications, or bring your OpenShift clusters to the edge, working with a multi-cluster environment is the key in achieving those goals. Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management or short ACM, allows you to easily work with multiple clusters and comes with a number of advantages. However, managing your clusters and applications at scale can be a challenging task. Ideally, there is a single source of truth which determines the configuration and workloads of each cluster. OpenShift GitOps enables you to do that by storing your configuration in Git repositories and keeping all of your clusters in sync automatically. Do you want to manage your OpenShift virtualization virtual machine workloads across multiple clusters while using a single source of truth in the GitOps way? This video will show you how you can do that with Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management and OpenShift GitOps. So what is Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management or short ACM? ACM simplifies the management of multiple clusters by offering end-to-end -end management, visibility, and control of the whole cluster and application lifecycle. It acts as a central point for keeping an inventory of all your clusters and applications and enables multi-cluster and multi-cloud scenarios, such as deploying the same application across clusters, different regions, possibly in several cloud providers. It uses a hub-and-spoke architecture and allows the targeted distribution of Kubernetes manifests across clusters. Before we go on, let me explain what hub and managed clusters are. The hub cluster is the cluster on which ACM is running on. It acts as an inventory and carries out all management actions. It is usually not running any actual workloads, though still possible. These run on managed clusters. Managed clusters are kept in the inventory of the hub cluster. They can be created and added to the inventory directly through ACM. Alternatively, Existing clusters can be added to the inventory as well. For more information, have a look at the ACM documentation. So now that we know what ACM is, let me explain what the GitOps way is and what Red Hat OpenShift GitOps does. The GitOps way uses Git repositories as a single source of truth to deliver infrastructure as code. Automation is employed to keep the desired and the life state of clusters in sync at all times. This means any change to a repository is automatically applied to one or more clusters, while changes to a cluster will be automatically reverted to the state described in the single source of truth. Red Hat OpenShift GitOps is a CI-CD delivery platform. It enables declarative GitOps workflows and allows to deploy applications on demand. It monitors the life state of clusters against the desired state in the Git repository and keeps them in sync. It builds on the Argo CD project, therefore the terms OpenShift GitOps and Argo CD might be used interchangeably. For more information, have a look at the GitOps documentation. One more thing before starting with the demo. Let me give you a quick primer about the application and application set CRDs. The Argo CD application is a custom resource definition which essentially describes source of manifests and the target cluster to apply the manifests to. Besides that, options like automatic creation of namespaces or the automatic revert of changes can be configured. The Argo CD application set is a CRD building on Argo CD applications, targeted to deploy and manage applications across multiple clusters while using the same manifest or declaration. It is possible to deploy multiple application sets which are contained in one monorepo. By using generators, it is possible to dynamically select a subset of clusters available to Argo CD to deploy resources to. In this demo, we are going to use application sets to deploy OpenShift virtualization and virtual machines to multiple clusters while using the same declaration of resources for all clusters. For more information on application sets, see the Argo CD documentation. So, enough with the theory for now, let's start with the demo. Here we have the OpenShift console. And first, I'm going to show you how to install the Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management Operator. 
For that we have to open the operators view and then the operator hub. Here we can enter ACM into the research, but here's already the card, so I'm clicking on that. And then I'm clicking on install. In this view, I need to click install again. And now it is installing the ACM operator. Now we can create the multi cluster hub. And I would just do that. Here I need to click on create again. Now we'll have to wait until the operator is fully functional. We can see here under its status that it's still in phase installing. While waiting on that, I'm going back to the operator hub to install OpenShift GitOps 2. So let's enter GitOps into the search. And here is the OpenShift GitOps operator. I'm going to install it too by clicking on install. And I'm going down and here I need to install again. And now let's wait until both operators are installed. To view their status, let's go back to the installed operators view and let's select project all. And now let's wait until the GitOps is ready. And uh, if we go back to ACM and then to the multi cluster hub, we can see that it's still installing. So let's wait until both operators are ready. We can see that an update to the web console is available. This can happen multiple times until the install is completed. We can click on Refresh Web Console though. And now we see the console reloading. As you can see, the multi cluster hub is still installing, so we'll have to wait some more time. The multi cluster hub is running now, and this concludes the installation of Advanced Cluster Management. If we go back to the installed operators, we can see that both operators are up to date and running now. The next step is to add some managed clusters to the advanced cluster management. For that, click on local cluster and select all clusters. Let's close this for now. You can see that we have just one cluster in our list and it is called local cluster. We will use this cluster as our hub cluster and you can also see that on the control plane type of the cluster. To add a cluster to this list, click on create cluster to create a cluster with ICM directly. I will create the cluster on Azure as I have already added credentials for this to the hub cluster. Here you can see I have to enter a cluster name and I'll go with Azure fmatoshek one and for now, I'll use the default cluster set. Finally, let's use the latest OpenShift and click on Next. In my case, I'm going to use the region Germany West Central, but that's up to you. For control planes, I'm going to use the D8S V3 instance type. And for worker nodes, I'm going to use the D4S version 3 instance type. Then I need to click on Next and I just use the defaults for the networks here as well. And no automation this time, just clicking on next. And finally, I click on create to create a new cluster. Please note that the chosen values gave the best results in my case, but your mileage may vary. Please note, Azure works for this demo scenario only. Nested virtualization is not supported in production environments. Because one cluster is not enough, I'm going to create another cluster. Just repeating those steps, Go to create cluster again, click on Assure. Enter the name of the second cluster, this time suffixing it with a dash two. Again, the default cluster set and the latest version. Using the Germany West Central region again, the D8S version three instance types for the control plane and the D4S instance type for the worker node. 
going with the default network settings again. And let's create another cluster. Going back to the clusters list, we can see that we have two new clusters now. We can see both are still creating, so we need to wait until they've been created successfully. Both clusters are ready now, and the next step is to add them to a cluster set. So we will open the cluster set view. And as a next step, we will create a new cluster set. I will name my cluster set managed. Now let's add our clusters to this cluster set. I will select both of the clusters, review the changes, and then confirm the changes. If I go to the cluster list now, I can see that both clusters were successfully added to the cluster set. Now that we have successfully created a managed cluster set, we can add those clusters to OpenShift GitOps. But before that, I will show you how you can access the OpenShift GitOps UI. For that, click on all clusters and select local cluster. Then click on networking and routes. Select the appropriate project. It is called OpenShift GitOps. There is a route called OpenShift GitOps Server. If you click on its location, the OpenShift GitOps UI will open. Here you can log in with your OpenShift credentials. If you do this the first time, it will ask you for permissions to access your OpenShift account. Just confirm that. As I told you in the opening slides, OpenShift GitOps is based on Argo CD, as you can see in the top left corner. Because of that, from this point on, I will use the terms Argo CD and OpenShift GitOps interchangeably. You can see that no applications have been created yet. And if we go to settings and click on clusters, we can see that only the default in cluster is available. Let's add some clusters to Argo CD. For that, let's change to the command line. To make a set of managed clusters available to OpenShift GitOps, a tight integration between ACM and GitOps exists. The integration is controlled with the GitOps cluster CRD. Follow these steps to make the managed clusters available to GitOps. As a prerequisite for this, we need to be logged in to the cluster on the command line. After that, run the following command to create a managed cluster set binding. Now that we have successfully created the managed cluster set binding, we need to create a placement to let ACM decide which clusters should be made available to GitOps. For the sake of simplicity, the placement we will create will select the whole managed cluster set, but advanced use cases are possible. Run the following command to create the placement. Finally, we need to create a GitOps cluster CRD to make the selected clusters available to GitOps on the hub cluster with the following command. Now that we have created all required CRDs, we need to reload the page to see the changes to the Argo CD cluster list. As you can see, the managed clusters are available now. Now we need to assign our clusters to environments. If we assign managed clusters to specific environments by setting a label on them. Ideally, it would be possible to assign these labels from ACM, but for the time being, this still has to be done in Argo CD. In an upcoming ACM release, it will be possible to carry over labels set in ACM to Argo CD. In this demo, we will work with the dev and the prod environments. Let's assign our clusters to these environments. Let's start with the first cluster on this list. We will assign it to the dev environment. For this, we need to edit the cluster and add a label. The label is called env and its value will be def. Save this and go back to the cluster list. Let's continue by assigning the second cluster to the prod environment. Again, I added the cluster and I add a label called env, but this time its value is prod. Save and go back to the cluster list. 
Now that we have assigned our clusters to environments, we can finally start and deploy applications to them. First, let's go back to the applications list. You can see it's still empty, no applications were created yet. OpenShift Virtualization will be the first application we will deploy to each managed cluster with the help of an application set. For this, run the following command. As you can see, the applications were created. Now, let's wait for them to synchronize. The command created an application for each managed cluster that deploys OpenShift virtualization with its default settings. The application ensures that the namespace OpenShift CNV exists and it will automatically apply any changes to the demo repository or undo any changes which are not in this repository. Sync waves are used to ensure that resources are created in the right order. You can follow the synchronization status of the newly created application for each cluster in the UI. Eventually, every application will reach the healthy and synced status. Now that every application is healthy and synced, we successfully deployed OpenShift virtualization to our managed clusters. As a next step, we will deploy a Fedora virtual machine on all managed clusters, again with the help of an application set. For this, run the following command. As you can see, two new applications are created. Notice how the health state of the created applications is suspended. This is because the created virtual machines are still in a stopped state. To get our newly created applications into a healthy state, we need to start the virtual machines by making a change to our repository. Before we start our virtual machines by making a change, let me quickly explain the difference between the virtual machine and the virtualization applications. As you can see in the path field of the applications, the virtual machines are using Customize instead of simple manifests. Customize allows to apply customizations to an application depending on the environment a managed cluster belongs to. In this demo, we are using the environments we assigned our managed clusters to earlier to choose the right Customize overlays. The dev and the prod overlay prefix names of created resources accordingly. Furthermore, the created virtual machines get more or less memory signed depending on the environment. These are only simple customizations, but the possibilities are endless. Again, here's a quick summary of the required steps to start a virtual machine. First, we need to choose if we want to modify all environments by modifying the base or if we want to modify just a single environment. For the demo, we are going to start the virtual machines in all environments by modifying the base. As a second step, we need to set the running field in the spec of the virtual machines to true. Third, we need to commit and push the change to our repository. And fourth and last, we need to refresh Argo CD to pick up the change. Notice the suspended health state and also notice the dev prefix of the created virtual machine. Now let's start the virtual machine by making a change to the customized base. For this, let's switch to the command line again. See the running field. We will change this to true. Save the file. Now we need to commit this change and push it to the Git repository. Finally, apply the change. Let us refresh the application in Argo CD. As you can see, the application is synced now and the VM is starting. We need to do this refresh manually because Argo CD only periodically checks for changes. If we want Argo CD to pick up this change immediately, we can refresh manually. Now, let us wait until the application is healthy. The application is synced and healthy now and the virtual machine is finally running. Let's go back to the applications view and see how all applications are healthy and synced now. Finally, to verify that the virtual machines are running, let's go to the UI of one of the managed clusters and have a look at the virtual machine. Here we need to open the all clusters view. 
Then let's go to the first cluster in the list and let us open its console. Now let's go to the virtualization tab and let's see our virtual machines. There's the created virtual machine. As you can see, it's fully up and running and we can also have a view at its console. Before the end of the demo, let's go back to the Argo CD cluster list to explain one more thing. For the sake of simplicity, the placement created in this demo selects the whole managed cluster set we created earlier, but more advanced use cases are possible. ACM can dynamically select a subset of clusters from the managed cluster set while following a defined set of criteria. This, for example, allows to schedule virtual machines on clusters with the most resources available at the time of the placement decision. For more on this topic, see the Open Cluster Management documentation. Now that the demo is concluded, let me give you a quick summary of the things we did. In this demo, we set up a hub cluster and two clusters managed by ACM to deploy applications to from a centralized management point. As example applications, we deployed OpenShift virtualization with simple manifests and a virtual machine with manifests customized by Customize. We learned how to apply customizations to specific environments and how we can start and stop virtual machines in a declarative way. All of this was accomplished in a GitOps way by using a Git repository as a single source of truth. This is of course only the tip of the iceberg. Building on this setup allows you to customize your application sets for different environments like development, staging and production, or to schedule your applications based on custom criteria, for example available resources with advanced placement rules. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something new.